Hello, friends and family. A warm welcome to you all. I sure hope that you all are doing well, staying safe, healthy, and happy in these uncertain times that have now become our new normal. As you know, the children have been home and they are doing very well with this new reality. They are taking it very well, not been at each other's throats, participated well in school. So I decided to reward them today with these delectable and delicious donuts. So come along with me. I have pre-measured all my dry ingredients. So what I'm doing is re-sifting the flour a second time. Then I'm going to add the sugar followed by the nutmeg for that warm and inviting bakery or pastry essence. And I've also added some salt. I'm whisking it all together to combine and then set it aside. That's it for the dry ingredients. Here are the wet ingredients. So I have some milk and it is lukewarm. I'm whisking my eggs and I'm going to add it to the milk. Whisk to combine and then I'm also going to add my melted butter. Now here is the yeast which is going to help the dough to rise and whisk all of these ingredients together and that's it for the wet ingredients. Next step is to combine the wet and dry ingredients to form our dough. So just pour your wet mixture into your dry mixture and stir until the dough comes together. When the dough forms, you know you have the perfect dough if it's sticky very sticky, stickier than usual, okay? That's the normal in this recipe, in this preparation. So now you're going to pour a little bit of oil. Because the dough is really sticky, you need to do that onto your work surface, okay? Before you pour the dough onto it. Otherwise, it won't be so much fun trying to knead this dough. It's just gonna stick to your hands on your end of surface. And so now you're going to knead the dough to get it nice and smooth. And also by doing this, you're developing that gluten. That's how you're gonna get nice, very light, airy donuts that's what we're going for here we don't want any dense donuts okay now as the dough starts to become sticky again to your surface you can use a little more oil to lubricate the surface and then you're also going to take the dough and slam it a few times you know this is like therapy <laughs> take all your frustrations onto the dough it helps you should you should still have a sticky dough when it's all said and done you're going to need the dough for about 12 10 to 12 minutes now you're going to grease your pan or your bowl that the dough is going to rise and we need 60 minutes or an hour to let the dough proof or rise so when you lubricate your bowl with the oil make sure that all the sides of it are also oiled okay because as the dough rises and it's going to double in size and you want it to not stick to the walls the inner walls of the bowl so it's easier to pour out and i'll tell you why shortly so after an hour or 60 minutes see it's doubled in size and you know that you're ready for the next step. If it's not doubled in size, you need to let it continue to proof. It needs to proof in a warm area. So what I did was I turned my oven on at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for only two minutes, turned it off, and then I placed the dough in there. And after an hour, it was perfect. Next step is you want to sprinkle some flour onto your clean work surface before pouring the dough onto it. And when pouring the dough, you want to be really gentle because what you want to avoid is to form layers. If you are not gentle or you didn't grease your inner, the inner walls of your pan um, evenly, then the dough will stick to the pan while it's pouring out. So you will be forced to re-knead it and that's not what you want. So when you pour it out, you're going to gently spread it evenly over your work surface while deflating it and then you're going to roll it with your rolling pin um, and the thickness you want is about half an inch so i've used the original um, donut cutter and cut them out trying not to be wasteful and then i remove the scraps out and set them aside we will use it in a different application and you'll see pretty soon and when you're removing your cut out donuts be gentle because you do not want to deform these perfectly formed donuts and then these uh, li little middle areas we're going to fry those also separately they are very uh, 
really rewarding to, to munch on while you're frying. You'll see what I mean. So yeah, I made a second dough using the same measurements because I wanted to make more donuts. I didn't feel like I had enough. So here is a second dough and see how that came out really perfectly easily and wasn't sticking to the sides of the bowl very important if you're not able to do that like i said you'll be forced to re-knead the dough which will form the layers and so when you fry the donuts you'll notice that they're forming layers and not very pretty so now your oil needs to be on medium heat you don't want it to be too hot or too low because you want these to fry into a golden color you don't really want a brown color right that's what donuts should look like so while you're frying them you notice that they are starting to form into those beautiful donut shapes they um, inflate as they fry so they become airy and light beautiful and when you're turning them just be careful not to splatter the oil onto yourself and look at it the first batch is fried and they look very beautiful yeah, so take them out when you get that golden color. You want to really regulate the oil temperature because, again, you do not want them to fry and look like they're done on the outside only to leave the inside uncooked and raw. Now we're frying the round ones. And those are so easy and fun to flip <laughs> and even safe at the same time. Look at those. <laughs> so yeah, those are done too. So remove them from the oil and let them sit on a rack. So they air dry. We are ready to make these donuts look very pretty. But prior to that, we're going to fry the scraps and the little round nuts that we got out of them. So yeah, we're now frying what my children call IDD, Imperfect Delicious Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so when you fry them this way they get these pointy edgy areas that are so crunchy and very delightful to eat very enjoyable yeah so that's also done and the finishing decorating treatment that I gave these was just simple granulated sugar and just toss them around in there to coat them and they are, they are ready to be devoured yeah these are reminiscent of some donuts that i used to have as a child back in ghana they just coat them with granulated sugar oh they were so so good to eat so that's done we'll set those aside now let's work on the others so i'm going to form a glaze you know a plain glaze so i have some melted butter and i have added whole milk to it i just added some vanilla to give it some flavor and now i'm adding confectionery sugar now if you don't have access to confectionery sugar just take granulated sugar and blend it up in a really good blender and you should have confectionery sugar and whisk it together until it's nice and smooth and perfectly combined and i'm using a chopstick action to coat these in this beautiful glaze yes look at these oh they were so good the way the children love these mm, they ask for more now friends i have to tell you i have a chocoholic in my home yes friends my middle daughter malaika is really into chocolate she thinks chocolate is everything she will do all the chores for me if i give her just a little bit of chocolate so this is for you malaika you know how you dug into this like there was no tomorrow <laughs> yeah so when you add the chocolate powder or the cocoa powder it tends to thicken the glaze which is perfect that's what i'm going for so yeah dip the round one into it turn it a few times to coat it well and just look at that oh the children really love the, these ones yeah everybody but Farah was really into these chocolate uh, glazed ones so now our final finishing look you can use any topping of your choice or you don't even need to use topping but you know these are for children so I use these sugary 
uh, white pearls and the confetti kind or the, the colorful kind as well to make them look pretty and attractive. And then I also had some pistachios. So I love pistachios. So I made a pistachio um, dust and just sprinkled them on there and I left three of them plain. And there you have it. These beautiful, delectable, sinfully delectable donuts are done now I put some of them in this box here as they would when you go to buy them from crispy uh, cream donuts or wherever you know bosa donuts or wherever yeah just to keep them nice and still soft the next day and that's exactly what what they were i really wish that we were in a time when i could take some to my neighbors because they have little ones like we do but you know we can't do that right now with what's going on in the world now look at how soft how airy these are my children took a bite and they said mom again this is better than crispy cream <laughs> i felt so good <laughs> they were so good yeah i really hope that you're able to try this recipe recipe and reward your children with it. I promise you they'll be very grateful and making these donuts was very therapeutic for me. So thanks again for watching. Make it a great day friends and family and as always have fun especially in that kitchen.